There are things that only Japanese would know on what we don't want foreigners to do. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Have you watched the video 12 Things Not to Do in Japan? As a Japanese man, I must say this video is very accurate, and I can recommend it to anyone coming to Japan. But although the things introduced in this video are true, most of them, we Japanese usually don't ask that much for foreigners. We eat and drink while walking, and cross the streets when the lights are so red. But on the other hand, there are things that only a Japanese would know on what we don't want foreigners to do. So today, I'll introduce five things not to do in Japan. From my opinion as a Japanese man that has handled over 60,000 foreign travelers working in the tourism industry. Because there are only five, I have carefully selected only the ones that I really don't want foreigners to do. Like, never do this, don't want you to do. The first two things come from the original video. The later three are my original ones, and it gets more and more important towards the end. So let's go. Number one, doing various things with chopsticks. I know there aren't many chances of using chopsticks outside of Asia, so it really can't be helped that you don't know about the rules regarding them. Even though I understand that, I still feel a little unpleasant when people make mistakes. Just imagine if you saw someone trying to eat a steak without a knife, or a person eating the bun and the patty of the burger separately. Wouldn't that bother you a bit? If we start talking about all the rules regarding chopsticks, it will take forever. And some, not many Japanese even know. So I'd like to just introduce three that are most famous and are best to avoid. Number one, stinking your chopsticks. Number one, sticking your chopsticks in your rice. Number two, handing something from chopstick to chopstick. Number three, pointing people and things with your chopstick. Number one, sticking your chopsticks in your rice. In Japan, we have a culture of offering a bowl of rice in front of the grave, along with flowers and sake. And in that bowl of rice, we stick a pair of chopsticks for the souls of the deceased to use. Number two, handing something from chopstick to chopstick. In Japan, after cremating the body, the bereaved family will carry the bones with chopsticks into a pot. This is because in the Japanese language, the pronunciation of chopsticks and bridge are both hashi. So it has the meaning of bridging the soul to heaven. Number three, pointing people and things with your chopsticks. Lastly, pointing someone or something with their chopsticks will make you look like a very arrogant person. If you find a character doing this in a drama or an anime, it's usually a bandit or something. This must be a common rule around the world, but eating a meal is an important place for communication. To show respect to the person who you're eating with, many rules and manners were born in Japan too. I don't want everyone to be too nervous, but I hope you can remember just these three. Number two, talking in loud voices in a closed area. In the 12 things not to do in Japan, he mainly explained about not talking on the phone or talking too loud on the train. But actually, it's best you avoid talking in loud voices in any closed area. That of course includes trains, but also on elevators or in a sauna. To respect and care for the people around you, it's important to keep quiet in these places. Now, this is a story of my own experience. I have experienced a living in America and China. When I lived in these countries, 
I've never cared about anyone talking on trains or anywhere. It simply never bothered me before. But it's really funny how in Japan, I can't help but hear the people talking around me. Of course, this is unintentional, and it's not very pleasant. I don't know why. Maybe it's a Japanese instinct. Or some sort of haki, I hope. Number three, sitting on the ground or floor. So from here, I will be talking about the things that were not introduced in the original video. I believe that this is the same in many countries, but you should avoid sitting directly on the ground or floor. This is not because you look like a beggar, but more because it's thought as a vulgar and dirty behavior. This applies to anyone, including foreign people, and we feel that it's filthy. Number four, barefoot on tatami. You have to take off your shoes indoors in Japan is well known. However, many people still don't know that. You have to wear socks when you walk on tatami mats. Tatami are the Japanese traditional floorings. You will find them at Japanese houses or at ryokan hotels you may stay at. The reason why you must not walk on tatami mats barefooted is very simple. It's because the tatami mats will get dirty. Since tatami is natural material, it cannot be cleaned with detergent. It means that once it gets really dirty, it cannot be removed. Replacing tatami mats costs about 5,000 to 20,000 yen per mat, and it takes time and effort to have a contractor come. Therefore, as a tribute to the owner of the house or hotel, be sure not to step on it with dirty feet. But there are exceptions. It is when you walk onto time mats in your room after taking a bath. It is because your feet are already cleaned. In other words, avoid barefoot anywhere indoors, not just on tatami mats. Even if you don't stain the tatami mats, Japanese people will get the impression that it's filthy. I remember when I was fiercely scolded by my mother when I accidentally forgot to wear socks when we visited her friend's house. She was completely in her Super Saiyan mode. It's best to have a pair of socks on. Number five. Rude Japanese. Before I start explaining about this fifth thing, I want to make it clear that I support and encourage those who are studying Japanese. And as a man who have studied a foreign language from nothing, I know that you make a lot of mistakes on your path to perfection. But still, I must say this. Please be careful what you say in Japanese. As you know, Japanese is a language that has a strict line between formal and casual. And even a man like me, who have lived abroad for many years, will still feel a little bit unpleasant when I hear impolite Japanese. I've met over 60,000 foreign travelers in the past, and many of them were studying Japanese. It was great that they thought I was a nice person to talk to, but these are some of the things they've said to me. I know it's impossible to say what the f do you want, not on purpose in English, but in Japanese, just a small mistake can make it sound like it. I told the people gently that it might be a little unpleasant for Japanese to hear these words, and they understood. But if it was a Japanese person who could only speak Japanese, he or she might just frown and walk away. So again, I'm very thankful that many people around the world are studying Japanese. But please be careful that you don't accidentally speak the words from manga and anime. So lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced five things not to do in Japan. Number one, doing various things with chopsticks. Avoid sticking your chopsticks in your rice, handing something chopstick to chopstick, and pointing something or someone with chopsticks. Number two, talking in loud voices in a closed area. Not just on the train, but try to stay quiet on elevators or in saunas too. Number three, sitting on the ground or floor. 
It is thought of as a vulgar behavior. Number four, barefoot on tatami. Walking barefoot on tatami mats will make them dirty. It's best to have a pair of socks on. Number five, rude Japanese. Japanese is a language that has a strict line between formal and casual. Please be careful that you don't accidentally speak the words from manga and anime. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this video would come in handy before coming to Japan, please hit the like button and share this video to your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so I need your help. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita. Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching my video. I wanted to take the omake talk this time because when I was uh, looking on the internet, searching for some um, other people's opinions on what they don't want uh, foreign travelers to do in Japan, there was one thing that I really, I did think about putting into the five things uh, this time in this video, but I couldn't. So it's like the sixth thing I wanted to introduce. It was about the uh, the perfume. I think it's mainly people from Europe that have very strong perfume. Um, in Japan, I believe, I guess it's the same as how you have to be quiet on trains or in closed areas as I explained this time. Perfume, something that has very strong fragrance, also affects the people around you. So, um, in Japan, well, if you go to Tokyo, there are a lot of people, Japanese people, who have very strong perfume on. But, um, yes, maybe in Kyoto, well, I've never um, experienced very strong perfume by Japanese people. So, yeah, I thought um, that could be one more thing. Oh, the sixth thing, number six, um, that uh, maybe foreign travelers um, could avoid doing in Japan strong perfume. Yes, I just wanted to introduce that lastly. Once again, thank you so much for watching.